Welcome back everyone, this is CodePulse here with another episode on how to create your own simple math interpreter in Python. In the last episode we created the parser, which generates a tree representing how the program should be executed and the correct order of operations. The final step for the interpreter is to traverse the tree and execute the appropriate code depending on the different node types. And I'll also have an additional episode on unit testing, and if you're not sure what that is, then you'll see in the next episode. Okay, let's get started. So we'll create a class for our interpreter, which will interpret our tree, and I'm just going to put that in interpreter.py. And we're also going to create a values.py file, which will hold the different value types that the interpreter is able to produce. So we'll just import data class for our types. And the only value that the interpreter is capable of producing at the moment is a number, so we're going to create a type for that. So we'll create a class called number, and this will just hold the value of the number. And we'll also create a representation method as usual, which will just return the string value of our number. So that's basically it for our number type, and we could have actually just worked with a float directly and not bother wrapping it in a number class. But at least if we are extending this interpreter in the future and we have different types, maybe not just numbers, then we can put them in their own classes in this file. So now we can get started with the interpreter. So the interpreter will have to know about the different node types, so we'll just go ahead and import those. And then we'll import our number type that our interpreter will be producing. So we can now create the class. And our interpreter is going to have a method called visit, which will take in a node. And what we'll be able to do is pass in the root node of our tree in here, and the interpreter will process that tree and then return a number. So what we'll do is we'll split our code into separate methods, one for each different node type that needs to be processed. So we'll have one method for our add node and one for our subtract node, etc. And in the generic visit method, we need to figure out which method to delegate to. So we'll create a method name variable, which will hold a string of the method we want to call. And each method will start with visit underscore, followed by the type of the node. So we can use Python's type function and then get the name attribute. So this means that an add node would translate to a visit add node method name. So we can now get the method from that name using Python's get attribute function. So we want to get the method from self and then pass in the method name. So now we can just call a method with our node and return its result. And we can move on to defining a method for each node. So we'll begin with the number node because this is of course the easiest, so we can just call our method visit underscore number node, and we'll take in the node. So we must translate this number node to our number type, and the value of the number is just going to be the value of the number node. Next we have the add node. We once again need to produce a number, and we want to interpret the left and right nodes of the add node and add them together. So obviously we don't know what type those nodes could be, it could be an, an, a simple number node or it could be another add node or it could be another subtract node etc. So what we want to do is just visit each node and that will reduce it down to a single number value and then we can just add the two number values together. So we'll interpret the first node of this add node, so that's node A and we're just using the visit method to interpret it. We can grab the value out of that and then add it to the interpretation of the other node. And now we can just copy and paste that for the other three nodes. So this one will be a subtract node, and we'll change the operator here to a minus. This one will be a multiply node, and we'll change the operator here to a multiply. And then finally this will be a divide node, and we'll go ahead and change this to a divide symbol. Now there's one extra thing we have to do for the divide node, and that's to catch any errors. And as you may know, we cannot divide by zero, so we have to catch that exception if someone tries to divide by zero. So really all we have to do is wrap this in a try except block. And if there's an exception with the maths, we're just going to raise our own exception, saying runtime mat error. So that should actually be it for the interpreter, so we can come into main.py. After we generate the tree, we're just going to check if there is no tree, and in which case we can just continue to the next input. So this means if someone doesn't type in anything, we will just completely ignore it. But otherwise now we can create our interpreter. So we just want to call interpreter.visit and pass in the tree. So we'll assign the result of that to value. And then we can just go ahead and print out that value. We're also going to wrap this in a try except if anything goes wrong, such as that runtime mat error we just created a few seconds ago. 
So we'll take the exception and put it in an E variable, and then we can just print out that exception. We also mustn't forget to import our interpreter at the top of the file. And I just realized we have to come back into interpreter.py because I forgot completely about the plus node and add node. So those are the two unary operations we have. So we'll create a method for those as well. So for the plus node, we can just interpret the node inside it. And since it's a plus node, we don't have to make any changes to the value. For the minus node, we'll visit the underlying node. We'll grab the value from that node and we'll put in minus before to change the sign and then we can create a new number out of that. Okay, so now we can go ahead and run our program. So if we start with something simple such as 5 plus 5, that works fine. If you put in 1 plus 2 multiplied by 3, you can see the order of operations are taking effect, so 2 multiplied by 3 is happening first. We can put a minus sign before our number and that works as well. And I think finally we can use parentheses to change the order of operations. So that's really it for the interpreter. I suggest you try add some more cool features to it. Maybe add a power operator or a way of doing square root for example. And then you can also take that a step further in the future and try create your own programming language from this. So as I've already mentioned, I'll have an additional episode for adding unit testing to this project. So if you're interested in that, I'll try to have that out soon. But anyway, that's going to be it for this episode, so special thanks to the top Patreon supporter, Hellsfair Hesvig Lizette. And really, thank you all for supporting my videos by watching them, liking them, subscribing them, sharing them. And we've just reached 1000 subscribers, so that's quite a big achievement for me, so really thank you all so much for watching these videos. And thanks for all the positive feedback in the comments. So I will see you all next time.